in any case, uh, what happened is that being a railroad managed to deal with all of its difficulties from raids and from uh, a number of natural disasters. There were three big floods at Harper's Ferry during the Civil War, which wiped out the bridges there, and those were rebuilt, and railroad operations continued. And the B&O Railroad was crucial in, in moving large bodies of federal troops from the east into places like Tennessee and Kentucky during the war, which were uh, absolutely crucial to the, uh, to the ultimate uh, victory of the Union forces. And so by the end of the war, the B&O Railroad was, was functioning very well and had overcome its difficulties. And it was one of four major trunk line railroads which were uh, developed and expanding. From north to south, those four trunk line railroads were the New York Central in the north, in New York and westward into the Midwest, the Pennsylvania Railroad, the, I'm sorry, the Erie Railroad, which ran just south of the New York Central, then the Pennsylvania Railroad operating in Pennsylvania proper, and then the B&O Railroad, which was the southernmost of the four major railroads. Partly as a result of its difficulties during the Civil War, the B&O was slow to expand into the Midwest, uh, slower than the other three railroads to the north of it, but it eventually uh, succeeded, and uh, it reached Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, after the Civil War, and then <coughs> It uh, uh, finally made it to Chicago in 1872. But here in this part of uh, what became West Virginia, and that happened on the 20th of June in 1863 during the Civil War, uh, West Virginia itself became a state separated from the state of Virginia. And <coughs> that was brought about primarily by the B&O Railroad which used its uh, corporate will to uh, essentially uh, promulgate and forward the idea of West Virginia becoming a separate state, which made it a great deal uh, less troublesome for the railroad to operate through what had been rebel territory. And uh, most of the people in West Virginia were more sympathetic to the Union than the aristocrats and planters in the southern part of Virginia, which uh, of course was very much opposed to the, uh, to the Union. So the point is that uh, the economic development, uh, the agricultural development, and the social and cultural development of the United States in general, and more specifically here in the eastern panhandle area of West Virginia, was uh, crucially supported by the B&O Railroad. It's a branch line railroad that, <coughs> that met the B&O at Harper's Ferry, and this was called the Winchester and Potomac. That had been developed at the same time that the B&O Railroad was created, and uh, it proved not to be as successful a moneymaker as the B&O Railroad itself, so the directors of that railroad persuaded the B&O to take over the operations of it in the late 1840s, although the B&O Railroad did not take for, uh, formal legal control of the Winchester Potomac Railroad until after the Civil War in 1867. But both of those pieces of railroad uh, were enormously important here and uh, continue to be so to the present day. Uh, it is certainly true that railroads were the absolute key to the industrial and political development and uh, formalization of the United States itself during the Civil War and after, and uh, well, they remain so today. Uh, the American standard of living is uh, very high, and it's uh, absolutely crucial to have the railroad system operating because it carries about 40% of the freight uh, that is carried throughout the United States on a daily basis. And so I think we can say that the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad 
was uh, enormously important in all of this and uh, continues to be so today, even though it is now uh, part of a larger industrial uh, railroad combination called CSX. So thank you very much.